Hi folks and welcome back to the geodynamics video lectures on climatic geomorphic and geodynamic processes. Here in lecture number five we're going to look at the evolution of eroding topography in mountainous settings and so that's our main goal for this lecture. The way that we're going to consider this is by looking at some numerical model predictions based on the equations presented in the previous video lecture. And so here we go. We'll take a look at our first example. What we're looking at here is the evolution of mountain topography over a time period of 30 million years as simulated in a numerical model. Here we have um, essentially what's happening in the model and that is that we have a block of material that's being uplifted vertically at a constant velocity. And so at time zero, the uplift velocity goes from zero to 100 meters per million years, or 0 0.1 millimeters per year, if that's more familiar like that. And it's uniform across the area. What you can see after two million years is the surface has been uplifted, and you have some river-like features that are starting to form here, some valleys that are being carved, but more or less you have a higher elevation, fairly flat surface with a few rivers. By six million years you can start to see a more complete river network that's developed, but still some relatively flat areas um, along some of the ridges. By 10 million years it looks like we've got more or less a well-established river network system with ridges separating the different river valleys. And by 30 million years in this particular scenario, we've basically reached a topographic steady state where there's a balance between the uplifting, uh, the flux of uplift um, into the base or the, the upward velocity of the block here and erosion at the surface. So those two things are balanced uh, by the time we reach 30 million years. So that was one example of how the landscape evolves with a constant tectonic forcing, a constant uplift velocity. Now the question is what happens when we change the climate or the tectonic forcings? What happens to the landscape that we are simulating when we change those different things? And well what we can say is that the topography is going to change. The topography will be sensitive to either climate or tectonic forcings and the expectation is that the change in topography will exponentially approach a new steady state. And so this brings up the idea of the response time, which is something we've seen previously already when we talked about the characteristic times uh, in the context of diffusion. And I think in that case it was in particular the uh, heat conduction equation, which is a diffusion type equation. And we talked about this characteristic time as the time it takes for the system to reach uh, 1 over E of the, uh, the change in what's been applied, or in this case it's about 85% of the way. You can see from the relationship here, it's basically 1 minus 1 over E times F is the characteristic time or the response time of the system. And by that time, you can see the response is most of the way to where it's ultimately going to go, which is the, the F line that's noted here in this particular plot. So here we're looking at the response versus time, and here's the forcing. So if we increase, for instance, the uplift velocity, we expect to see a response over time that by time tau, we're about 85% or so um, of the way to the new steady state. And this is going to depend on climate. It'll depend on some of these other parameters, the length scale over which we're transporting sediment or um, the river flux, and the spatial scale of the uplifting region. So there's a number of different things that play in here. Now we'll look at some more examples essentially of how these um, systems behave. Now in what we're going to look at here, essentially what we'll see is a combination of a line on these plots that will represent the average uplift rate and a line that then represents the average denudation or erosion rate. And so here we have on the vertical axis uh, the indication of the uplift or denudation rate, and then along the horizontal axis is time. Now for the first case and shown in the top here, we have a time scale 
uh, which is TT, divided by the tau, which is that, um, that reference time scale that we just saw on the previous slide. And if this ratio is much, much greater than one, it means that the time scale for TT, in this case, it's the tectonic time scale. The tectonic time scale is much longer than the time scale associated with tau. And what we see is that more or less, the system is able to keep up so that if we change the uplift in the tectonic model, the erosion rate basically follows along and proportionally changes. So that's for slow variations. If we go to an intermediate time scale where the uh, tectonic, you know, time scale for tectonic changes is approximately the same as the response time, there we see the dashed line here showing that we've slowly increased the tectonic uplift velocity before decreasing it, and there's a lag between the erosional response. So the landscape has reached its highest elevations or the most rapid um, uplift velocity at some time here, but the most rapid erosion rates don't occur until some time later. So in other words, it takes some time for the erosion to respond to the change in tectonic forcing. Here we see rapidly varying tectonic forcing, so uplift rates going up and down very quickly. And what you can see in terms of erosion is something that ends up being close to the average um, value for the rate compared to the uplift uh, velocity for tectonics. And if we have an impulse of forcing, basically a single pulsed spike in uplift, what you see is basically a spike or uh, rapid erosional response that then decays with time. So that gives us a sense of how these tectonic uplift velocities and erosion models react um, to different timescale forcings. There's one other thing we can look at here, and this is an example of the evolution of topography over a time scale of basically 33 million years, so from 11 million years to 44 million years. Um, we basically have a tectonic uplift velocity that goes up and reaches a peak at around, I think, 22 million years before decaying down to uh, the minimum at 44 million years. And here is essentially the sediment response that we see. So here's the lag time that we see uh, in terms of the sediment response or the erosion response to the system. So from time 11 to 22, you can see basically we're building up the topography here, reaches probably its highest elevations at around 28 million years. So that's a little bit beyond the peak in tectonic uplift. And then the system begins to erode down and, uh, and decay later on after the tectonic uplift velocity decreases and then erosion is basically um, still dominating and reducing the elevations at the Earth's surface. So that's, again, just another example of the time, um, the sort of temporal response or the time response to changes in the tectonics of the system. So once again, it's time to take your quiz. And when you come back for the final of the video lectures on this topic, we'll talk about the tectonic models and how they relate to changes in erosion.